<clears throat> let's uh, let's get into part two here. Um, and I, I, I like the suggestions over there. Uh, Risky, if you're talking about do we feature other RP systems on the channel, I don't mind doing so. I think in August, when the Munchkin 2nd uh, Edition playtest comes out, we might spend a couple weeks in Munchkin, uh, just sort of bopping around and seeing what 2nd Edition's all about. Okay. We have our character sheet out and ready. Who are we going to make now? Let's take that journey together. Oop. After, there we go. After this bite. Hmm. Possibly as a as a fun side theme every now and again, risky. The core of the channel I'm, I'm going to be keeping as D and D, with uh, kind of a splash of maybe some role play video game after the after the broadcast as bonus content. But um, I don't mind talking about other systems at all. I mean, we could talk about Dark Heresy, uh, Pathfinder. Uh, we can talk about um, Seventh C. Um, featuring those games, I probably won't be. Not that I have a lack of interest, or that I'm only married to Dungeons and Dragons, because that's not the case. Um, but I want to keep the core of the channel uh, rather straightforward and simple. But what that could also mean is, if that's something that you wanted to work on, Risky, um, we could cross promote each other if you wanted to do. Um, rules, uh, like going over rules and character builds on your channel. Okay. Let's start off with a percentile roll to figure out, do we have a boy or a girl or a multi-class character? 82. All right, we have a male character. Now we're going to roll a d10 and figure out what race he is. Uh, Dark Initiative was asking about sneak attack. Uh, yes, sneak attack is uh, 2d6. Thank you. Whoops. All right, here's our D10. Let's find out what race. Uh, oh, we got a 10, which is a reroll. Three. A halfling. Now I'm going to roll odds or evens to determine which kind of halfling. Evens. A light foot halfling. Uh, Pi says, do people report back on how a character created here worked out in an actual game? I don't know if anyone has ever reproduced the characters we make here in a game of their own. It would be interesting to learn, um, Zuler, but I, I haven't had it happen yet. Uh, Santa, a halfling sun monk uh, would be fun. Well, we have a halfling. I don't know about a monk yet. Uh, Alexander, have a great night. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, in high chat also, yes. <laughs> um, oh, all right, you're going to do some stuff in Delta Green. Well, if I can promote you, make sure to let me know like when and where, and also uh, post that in our Discord, on our Twitch promotions channel too. Diadem, sadly, I do not have enough burritos for everyone. Now let's figure out her alignment. 151. So she is going to be good. She's going to be neutral good. Neutral good and neutral evil. These are going to be best of friends. Maybe, actually. Who knows? Now let's roll a percentile and find out what level we're going to generate him at. 
86 is going to put us... Ooh, look at that. We're going to be generating a level 19 character. By that point in time, you'll have had the ability, unless you're a fighter, to get five ability score improvements or stat bumps. I'm going to roll a percentile and find out how many of those we're going to replace by feats. With a 78, one, one of the stat bumps is going to get replaced by a feat. Now let's generate a 13-sided die and figure out his background. Two, another charlatan. Oh my. There are six different scams charlatans run in the PHB, and he is running scam number three. I know, it's an epic fail, Diadems. And uh, yeah, I'm not running Xanathars uh, tonight for character creation, uh, so we won't be able to use the sun if he, uh, if he does come up as a monk. Okay. He's going to get two personality traits, an ideal, a bond, and a flaw. Personality traits are two and one. And then his ideal, we have five, three, six. I don't know what those are offhand, even though we just made one. It doesn't matter right now. These are placeholders. We will we'll go back and we'll fill him in. We'll build him step by step. Right now, we just need to create some some milestones, right? Some some guideposts. Okay. Now, after after all this waiting, we come down to the magic D12 to determine what will his class be. Three. He is a cleric. Okay. Clerics have seven different domains. Eight if you include death, but he's not an evil character, so we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to roll a d8, and I'll re-roll an eight if I get it. One. He is a knowledge cleric. And now we're in the last little bit of random number generation. Halflings here start at 2 feet 7 inches. And we're going to add 2d4 inches to his height. We're adding 6. Uh, so that's going to make him uh, 2 feet 13 inches. And by that I totally mean 3 foot 1 inch. Now we're going to take this same number, 6, uh, and multiply it by, um, multiply it by 1. So six, and we're adding that to his base, his base weight of 35. So he is 41 pounds. Now, when you determine this, this is he gets up in the morning, he scratches his butt, and he's like he's just in his PJs or his skivvies. It's not his backpack. It's not his books. It's not his weapons. This is just him. He wakes up. He's 41 pounds. And that doesn't count against his encumbrance because that's just his natural weight. See a cleric who pretends to be a rogue? Well, he's not a trickster, but the knowledge would be very interesting. Lastly, let's find out where in the life cycle this character is. I'm going to roll a percentile, and let's find out. Oh, you know what? I need some background music going. Um, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. There we go. Roll a percentile. 56. 
in the life cycle, then he he is an adult. That's column three. Let's cross-reference it with halflings. He's between 70 and 110. Or 71 and 110. So we're going to roll a 40-sided die. Four. So 71, 72, 73, hey, 74. Cool. All right, that's all the random number generation we need. Now we're going to close down our, our roll guide. And we can consult the book of players. Feels like we're just at charlatan, doesn't it? Okay, charlatan number three, I insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weakness and secure their fortunes. Oh, well then. That alone, has that caused uh, your neurons to start flaring about this character? His personality is as follows. Two and one. Oh, I have a joke for every occasion, especially occasions where humor is inappropriate. Well, I think maybe our first two characters might get along in some ways, huh? And one, I fall in and out... <clears throat> of love easily and am always pursuing someone maybe maybe our halfling cleric here is is trying to be ambitious and is pursuing our gold dragonborn yeah yeah <laughs> atonement by knowledge you think santa His ideal is five. Also friendship. Material goods come and go. Bonds of friendship last forever. Are we making her alter ego? Is her alter ego somehow a halfling male? I mean, that's a good trick to pull off. <laughs> her bond is three. Somewhere out there... I have a child who doesn't know me. I'm making the world better for him or her. Hmm. Maybe something tragic? Or, look, if he falls in and, in and out of love easily, uh, one evening he had an oopsie, and uh, there's a kid out there somewhere that he knows about, but he isn't a part of that child's life, but he does want to make the world a better place for him or her. It's fine, Santa. No accidents in my dojo, says Raikon. <laughs> uh, and his flaw is six. Ah, here we go. I hate to admit it and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. These two are made for each other. Wow. And again, this was all completely random. Completely random. And these two characters, in their own way, are just resonating so well together. By the way, Diadems, I do have plenty of tortilla chips for you all, uh, along with some dip, if you, uh, if you would like some. I didn't have enough burritos, but I, I do have some chips and dip for you all. Oh, 
Okay. Deception and sleight of hand are what we get for being a charlatan. Tools. Disguise kit. Forgery kit. As proficiencies. We are also going to get a set of fine clothes. A disguise kit. Tools of the con of your choice. So let's see. If we try and insinuate ourselves into people's lives and kind of we're like a gold digger, kind of. Um... What would tools, what kind of tools would a con like that need? Perfume, um, <laughs> random holy symbols to try and present yourself to people, uh, to gain their affection that you are, you know, that you believe that you are one of them, uh, that you can, you know, perform these miracles or something. Because wouldn't that be something, right? Yes, Rikon, I completely agree with you. The background is still relevant for a level 20 character in so much that, I mean, you wouldn't have gotten to level 20 without your background. And you do get some mechanical benefits from your background, too, uh, Santa's Blah. So what kind of tools would he have to pull off his con? Belt, pouch, and 15 gold to spend on whatever. I want you all to think up also, what is his false identity? No, Santa, don't worry about it. If you're new, this is the place to ask questions like that. Um, to propose an idea, even if you're not sure or you think it's silly. We're here sitting... We're sitting at a table in a game store having a discussion about role-playing games. You are fine. You are welcome, especially as a new player, to sit with us, ask, explore, conduct thought experiments. You are totally fine, Santa's Bluff. Diadems is missing some EXP for an encounter. Um, okay. Could, uh... Uh, alright, could a, a mod add, uh, Diadem's, uh, king, 100 EXP? All right, so we need a false identity for her. Her false identity was a um, kind of a a traveling priest selling uh, absolutions and trinkets. So we'll need a false identity alter ego for him as well. Let's come up to races and look at halflings. I love this picture. Every time we make a halfling, doesn't she just fill your heart with joy? Your deck score increases by two, so we'll put a placeholder down here. Um, our speed is 25 feet. Giving us a 12 climb, 12 swim, and 0 fly. We are a small race, S-M-O-L. Uh, we do get the lucky feature. Halflings get lucky. Hey. Uh, that allows you to reroll a 1. We're also brave. You have advantage on saving throws versus being frightened. So up here at advantages, we'll just put versus frightened. And that way it'll save a little bit of space. We will get halfling nimbleness so we can move through creatures that are bigger than us which is just about everyone we get common 
and halfling as languages. And lastly but not leastly, we can apply our Lightfoot part of the template to our character. Uh, we are going to increase our Charisma by one. And we are also naturally stealthy. You can attempt to hide even when you're obscured only by a creature that's at least one size larger than you. Eleven to twelve occasional firework pop, two a.m. constant booms. I'm having the opposite here. I don't know if any of you have heard any sort of pops or booms in the background, but boy, around from about ten to midnight, neighborhoods all over were just lighting the sky up. Halfling privilege. <laughs> mmm, Rikon, that's great. You DM'd and played D&D for the first time during Free RPG Day. You're very welcome. I'd love to hear how it goes if you wanted to share that in Tales from the Tabletop. Santa asks, Doesn't any class can move through an occupied space as difficult terrain as long as it doesn't end its movement on the space? Um... Offhand, I don't remember. I know you can move through allied spaces, and you can't you can't stay in them. But I, I believe you can. Um, uh, I, I believe you can. I don't know. I've run it that you can. Wow, marathon first session, Rikon. That is awesome. Um, if there is a rules uh, a rules lawyer, quote-unquote, out there that can answer Santa's question uh, specifically, could you please do that? Oh, and you're DMing for your family soon? Yeah, five players? Five is the sweet spot. I love running for five. Four is okay. Six is okay. Mm-hmm. More or less, in a private game. I run a public game at my store, and we've had 14 people sit down. It's awesome fun. But you run the game differently in that type of a setting. Okay. Congratulations. We're a charlatan, and we're a halfling. Now it's time to add the third leg to the stool, and look up what being a cleric is going to grant us. Especially at such a high level. Yep, I've had 14 people sitting down playing uh, Curse of Strahd. Simultaneously. It's a lot of fun. If you want to read how that goes, although caution spoilers for the content of the mod, um, you can... I, I keep an adventure diary on our Discord, and you can read how those games go and see pictures. Hmm. That's a fine tactic, Rikon. Use what you know and what you're familiar with and flavor your game that way. That's a perfectly viable strategy. Woo, level 19. Look at all the fun stuff we get to play with. So, let's fill in a couple numbers first. Our proficiency... Look, we start here, let's just go across. Our proficiency bonus is 6. We're going to know five cantrips. One, two, three, four, five. And now, and I love this version of the character sheet because you can put your spell slots on the first page. Let's look at our spell slots right here. Four, three, 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 two, one, whoop. One, one, one. All right. We'll get the other stuff. Not going to worry about it right now. 
Um, let's zoom back out, and we'll continue building our character kind of from the ground up. It's, um, you know, we're not going to generate a level one and then go through every level at a time, but you'll see how we generate it. Okay. We are also a D8 hit die class, and because we're level 19, we have 19 hit die. Or we have 19 D8 hit die. We have proficiencies in light and medium armor, as well as shields. We have proficiency with all simple weapons. Our saving throw proficiencies are wisdom and charisma. So here you can see I'm filling in the diamonds. The diamonds indicate a saving throw based on that ability. Whereas the circles represent a skill that uses that ability as a, as a foundation. Okay, now we get two proficiencies from History, Insight, Medicine, Persuasion, and Religion. Let's look at his personality again because that will help us determine uh, maybe what skills he would be proficient in. Let's see. He has jokes for occasions... Uh, especially ones that aren't good for jokes. I fall in and out of love easily. Friendship he's pursuing. Somewhere out there I have a child who doesn't know me. Um, but he wants to make the world a better place for that child. I hate to admit it, and I'll hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. I almost want to say... So he may not have a good bedside manner because of the jokes. Um, and maybe medicine? I don't know. Insight seems pretty good because he wants to read people. He wants to know if they're grumpy and he can make them feel better. Insight could work. Maybe, maybe persuasion. While he is a cleric, yes. I don't think by default that means you should get knowledge religion as a, um, as a, a proficient skill. Because I, I don't know. It, it's not that he's not religious, but, um, or maybe history. History might be a good one too. You think medicine to keep his friends around? I think about a concept for a character like that. Cleric who created a false religion and uses it to get anything he wants from fools who believe him. Ooh. So maybe he's trying to start his own thing, Alexander. That could be interesting. In fact, that could fit into his charlatan background, where he tries to get into people's, you know, into their, their hearts and compel them to action. Oh, what's the, what's the monkey wrench, Derek? You think medicine works for him? So maybe history to know how, like, what's going on in the world and, like, what's been wrong so he can write them and medicine as a way to, um, medicine as a way to fix it. And remember, too, you may say, well, look, medicine on a cleric, don't you have spells for that? Medicine can also be for emotional support or psychological care, right? Like a counselor. There's not a, uh, there are spells that can alter moods. 
and emotions and such. But remember, medicine isn't just putting a leaf on a wound and then calling it a day. I have not seen it yet, Dark Wolf. I'm sorry. I'll check out it. I'll check it out in a little bit. Oh, did can you talk to a manager about that, Derek? Uh, the spells come from inside yourself, Fluffy. Because it's your beliefs. It's your convictions and your desires that are manifest by whatever this external deity is. In my in my homebrew campaign, it's effectively a monotheistic um, it's a monotheistic system. I don't have a pantheon of gods anymore. Oh, jeez, Derek. Wow. Rolled stats can be powerful. <laughs> Alright, so there's our skills. We get a mace or a warhammer if proficient. I don't believe going knowledge domain makes us proficient with... Um... I could be wrong. Let's take a quick little peek. No. Okay. Okay. So we're starting with a mace, so we can browbeat people into believing us. I guess we can go scale. A light crossbow and 20 bolts, or... So he's probably going to be the same way. He has a mace for bonking. Maybe to try and deceive people and making him look stronger than he is or something like that. But he does seem to have a bit of a, a cowardly streak to him. He would be carrying a priest pack to help his con. A shield and a holy symbol. And for the shield, like we wrote scale mail down here for the armor. For the shield on this sheet, you see this, um, I'll zoom in a little bit. In armor class, you see this other shield down here. If you click that, that reminds you that you're currently using a shield. So, mental note, plus two to your AC because of that. It's just a static. Okay, spell casting, we're going to do at the end because we need stats to be able to help determine that. Don't worry about spell casting right now. <clears throat> we get our domain at level 1. We'll get to there. We're also going to get channel divinity. Actually, we'll just put it down here. Chan Div, and we can use it three times a day. <clears throat> Actually, we're up to Destroy Undead, and you'll see that in a second here. And then our domain will give us something else. At fifth level, yep, okay. At four or lower, Destroy Undead CR4. We will also get Divine Intervention, meaning that we can get a spell effect uh, as, as a random chance if we pray to our deity.
And for knowledge domain, we're going to get some domain spells, and we'll get to that in a second. Those are spells we're guaranteed to always have, and they don't count against the number of spells we can prepare for a day. If that doesn't make sense, just stay tuned, and I will explain spells uh, for uh, clerics. Blessings of Knowledge. At first level, you learn two languages of your choice. You also become proficient in your choice of two of the following skills. Arcana, History, Nature, or Religion. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of those skills. Okay, so we, we get kind of expertise in a way. <laughs> Santa likes the divine intervention concept. And you'll be like, hey, can I can I get a hand? Can you just help me smite something, please? Well. Joke for every occasion, falling out of love, friendship. You have a child out there somewhere. I hate to admit, and I hate myself for it. So probably... We could probably now give him religion, and we can probably give him nature if he wants to learn more about the world and make it a better place. And now, actually, from any of these three, because all three of these qualify, any two of these he can get, quote-unquote, expertise in. And probably history and religion was brought up. Interesting, Diadems, you have a party of staggered levels. All right, our channel divinity is called Knowledge of the Ages, which is a really good one. You can use your channel divinity to tap into a divine well of knowledge as an action. You choose one skill or tool. For 10 minutes, you have proficiency with a chosen skill or tool. It's really, really good. I mean, he's, he's, effectively, he's effectively a skill-based character now because of that. And we're also going to get Channel Divinity, read thoughts. You can use your Channel Divinity to read a creature's thoughts. You can use your access to the creature's mind to command it. As an action, choose one creature you can see within 60 feet of you. Yes, that is very good. Uh, potent spellcasting. Starting at 8th level, you add your Wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. Add whiz to damage. <clears throat> visions of the past. Starting at 17th level, you can call up visions of the past that relate to an object you hold or your immediate surroundings. You can spend at least one minute in meditation and prayer, then receive dreamlike shadowy glimpses of recent events. You can meditate in this way for a number of minutes equal to your wisdom score, and you must maintain concentration during that time. Object reading, aura reading. These all play very well into a charlatan, by the way. He is good, and so he's more selfless, but he has a skill set that he just chooses to use against certain people. And visions of the past. Here we go. Cool. It may not seem like a lot. You're like, well, level 19 character, this whole thing should be filled. And you know what? With other types of classes, they will be filled. 
but clerics don't get a ton over here because of all the spells they get access to. The spells are a big part of who the class is and or what they do. All right, let's come down here real quick. We are going to be a cleric. We are casting off of with domain. Two domain spells per level up to five. And we end up getting four, three, 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 two, one, one, one. And we have five cantrips. One, a two, -hoo, a three. But it continues into four. And it might take five, five licks of the Tootsie Pop to get to the center. All right, command and identify. Remember, these are kind of the freebie spells that we get. These are thematic to who we are and what we do. Augury and suggestion. Knowledge contains true power. Arcane Eye, Confusion. Legend, Lore, and Scrying. Cool. All right. Well, we have our we have our chassis of our character. Now we got to drop the engine of the ability scores in because that's going to run so many parts of our car or our, our car actor. Ha 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 We have our standard array up here and we got to slot it in to uh, what we'd like to I I'm really really thinking that uh, he's going to be way more intellectual than he will be physical well the the spells you see picking spells especially at character creation is is interesting because clerics have access to all of their cleric spells you wake up and you pray for the miracles that you need to occur that day um now what you can do as a practice is say all right this is my this is my normal suite of spells that I wake up if I'm not doing anything in particular. And what that will do is that showcases his personality. On an average day, he wakes up, eats his vitamins, says his prayers, and Hulk Hogan would be proud. And what does he expect on a normal day? So it would be an extension of your character's personality under, I don't know, normal circumstances. But with clerics and druids and, uh, well, and paladins get this too, it can be wishy-washy because every time they take a long rest, they can change their entire, uh, their entire spell list. All right. Wisdom for sure, I think needs to be high. Um, I mean, this is his, this is what he's good at doing. And this is how he's casting his spells, building his following and helping to, con uh, helping to con people. I would argue 15 here. Give him a 14 Charisma and a 13 Intelligence. Give him a 12 Dexterity, a 10 Constitution, and an 8 Strength. If you all think, uh, if you all think that he should have his stats rearranged, please let me know. We can discuss it. But he relies on his mind, on his, his mental assets, a lot more than his physical. And his dexterity, it can help with the light crossbow a little bit. Um, and it helps with his defense a little bit too, but, you know, it's quick thinking. So when we add in our racial modifiers, that gives us a 14 dex and a 15 charisma. Now remember... 
we are going to get five ability score increases. However, one of those is going to be a feat. Hey, Calamity, good to see you. We should choose the feat first in this style of character building to accentuate who he is or what he does because feats help specialize a character. Some feats can also uh, give you a stat bump also. Uh, it's a partial one, but they can also give you a, a, a partial stat bump. So let's come over here to Chapter 6. Customization options. And here are the feats. Um, uh, let's see. Going back to his personality... He has a joke, so he, he could be social. Uh, so we could find some charisma-based one. Fall in and out of love. An actor could be interesting. There's a group leader that gives a bunch of temporary hit points to people. Uh, that could be a good one, too, for him. Um, I have a child who doesn't know me. Uh, I hate to admit it. I'll run if the going gets tough. Alert, maybe. You gain a plus five bonus to initiative, and you can't be surprised while you're unconscious. Other creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against you as a result of being hidden from you. Actor could be good. Increase your charisma by one. You have advantage on deception and performance checks when trying to pass yourself off as a different person. So that could definitely help accentuate his charlatan nature. You can mimic the speech of another person or soundbite made by other creatures. You must have heard the person speaking or heard the creature make the sound for at least a minute. Uh, not a dual wielder. If I'm passing over a feat that you think he should have, let me know, too. I'm going off of what is springing to mind. Inspiring leader. You can spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up the resolve to fight. When you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures. Uh, within 30 feet of you who can see and hear you for, and can understand you. Each creature can gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. That could be a good one, especially if he doesn't want to be personally in the fight. He can rally a bunch of people to help fight for him and give him temps and say, go get him. Linguist, he's already going to be able to speak. Um, actually, if we go this, he gets two other languages that we can choose because of his knowledge domain. Um, that could increase his int by one. He learns an additional three languages and has his own personal hidden code that he can write. Hey, Bubonic. Oh, you, you got sick from something you ate? Oh, man. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you for spending some time with us tonight, even if you're feeling ill. Uh, Diadems would switch wisdom and intelligence. Uh, why would you do that, Diadems? It was very good, uh, Bubonic One. It was a very good one. Now, by the way, uh, for you all, if you're new here, Lucky is a feat. It's a very good feat. It can apply to anyone under any circumstances. And so I don't like giving it out as a feat because it's just so universal in nature. It doesn't really help a character be a character. He's a knowledge character, yes. Uh, however, he's a knowledge domain cleric and he casts off of wisdom. And it's fine. You know, we can... In the 5th edition, you can run non-optimized... Um, non, like, attack stat optimized characters. Because there are a lot of spells that are just static effects. Can you cast it? Congratulations, you get the full effect. But uh, if, we ca if, he, if we keep his wisdom high, he can cast more spells, and those spells will be more powerful. Given his ambition as a charlatan... I think we would want to keep his wisdom uh, as high as possible. Uh, going back to what Santa was saying, observant here. Um, you increase your int or whiz by one. You can see a creature's mouth while it's speaking. Uh, you can interpret what it's saying by reading its lips. And you have a plus five bonus to your passive perception and investigation. That's Yeah, that's not a bad one either. Um... If you want to make him extra magical without multi-classing him, we can also give him Magic Initiate. And he can pick up, I don't know, some Druid spells or something along those lines. Some Bard spells. 
Uh, mobile, this, that, you know, mobile could be an interesting one for him too, right? He'd go up to 35 feet from 25. He's already mobile and can dash around, and he has a propensity to run anyway. When you use the dash action, difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement, and when you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn, whether you hit or not. Uh, so that means that he can just dash all around and try bonking people if he really needs to. Hi, Flat. Yeah, I can try and zoom this in a little bit. Let's see. Right now we're talking about uh, the feet that we want to give. Oh, wait. Are you talking... I'm sorry. I, you're probably talking about this one. Sorry. I'm... Uh... So, I don't know. Uh, observant is a good one. I don't know if that really would fit who he is as a character. Mobile, I think, really would fit him. Uh, we're already a ritual caster. Um... Spell Sniper. You've learned techniques to enhance your attacks with certain kinds of spells. Uh, spell Sniper would be another good one for him because he is kind of cowardly despite his braveness as a uh, as a halfling. Um, we are we would get an extra cantrip. Um, we'd get an extra cantrip, and uh, we can cast from even further away. And you know what? That could be very beneficial too because the Knowledge Domain Cleric allows us to add our Wisdom modifier in bonus damage to cantrips. Uh, picking up another cantrip that we can use from an even longer distance away and deal more damage uh, could be beneficial to him. So, I don't know. Spell Sniper and Mobile seem to be, to me, to me, um, the, the top picks. So I don't think Warcaster, he doesn't want to be in combat. I don't think he wants to get in combat... Uh, or, or try and provoke it. So I guess it would come down to, is, would he be more, I guess, defensive or offensive in this case? Observant could go well with the charlatan. Um, though the type of charlatan he is, uh, he this number three here indicates that he is the type who will... Uh, try and, uh, you know, gain your affection and then bilk you out of your money. So, passive perception and intelligence investigation, maybe if that was, maybe if it was like a card shark or or a pickpocket or something, but for the type, that it's he's very social. He's a, he's a very charismatic person. Uh, there is the good old Lucky, and that's why I don't like using Lucky. Especially, I mean, Lucky on a Halfling. Uh, well, Halflings already have Lucky as, an, as a racial ability. Um, so giving him, giving that to him as a feat, I mean, it'd be interesting. He'd be super lucky. Um, you know, it, I, I'm not going to poo-poo it or say, well, if you've run that character, it's bad. But for what we do here... You can apply Lucky to any character, so I don't like providing Lucky to characters that we randomly roll because it doesn't make them... It doesn't make the character more of a character. I mean, maybe if we went with a Trickster. If we went with a Trickster Domain Cleric, that could be interesting to be double Lucky as a Trickster or something like that. So, Flat Hat, yeah, I, I, Observant, is it's not bad, and he can speak four languages. That's... But would it be thematic to the person that he is? Right? I have a joke for every occasion, especially occasions where humor is inappropriate. I fall in and out of love easily, and I'm always pursuing someone. Friendship, material goods come and go, bonds of friendship last forever. Somewhere out there I have a child who doesn't know me, I'm making the world uh, better for him or her. And I hate to admit it, and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets rough. So that's why I'm thinking mobile, um, mobile inspiring leader or spell sniper could be vi uh, really viable for him.
So what are you all thinking for the feet? It can be, and there's, look, there's really, hey, Slevin11, thank you, ah, oh, run, follow me, I'll save you. Keen mind, increase your int by one, you always know which way is, uh, so you know your direction, you know the time, and you can, you have eidetic memory for the last month. Hey, Steel Dust, good to see you. Well, we've had three people... We've had three people say Observant. So, why don't we go with Observant? There you go. Flat hat. Thank you also for the follow. Run. <laughs> All right. Now that we have our feet, we can apply our other four stat bumps. And remember, every time, every time that uh, we do that, we can add two points to one ability or one point to two abilities. If we do that, I don't know, on our first one of our four, we can put Wisdom and Charisma both up to 16. And then number two, we can bring that to 18. And then probably what? Wisdom to 20 and Charisma. Or no, nah, maybe Intelligence up to 16. He has a pretty good Charisma already. And so that's what he'd look like. Um... I put the one I put the one into intelligence, although it's going to be six to one half, half dozen to the other, uh, in terms of how we were going to balance things out. But after the feat and four other ability score improvements, these are the scores that we would be looking at for the character. If you want to rearrange them, let me know. Also, I applied it already, Santa. He hates when he chickens out. Would he increase brawn or escape ability? Well, uh, strength doesn't measure your speed. Uh, if anything, dexterity. Uh, dexterity would help you get out of a situation because dexterity is going to help your armor class. Um, but that's why I was thinking uh, mobile. Uh, because whether he hits or not, if he just flails his mace, or if he had a flail, right? If he flailed his flail at someone, they can't take an attack of opportunity against him and he moves more quickly. Um, but, you know, athletics isn't really indicative of being able to run or, or get out of a situation. All right, two for the saving throw and for the non-proficient skills, eight for sleight of hand because he is proficient, right? We have a two dex plus six. Constitution is zero. Our int, 3, 3, and 3 for our non-proficiencies. For our regular proficiency, such as nature, that's a 9. However, because of his knowledge expertise, quote-unquote, for history and religion, that is going to be 15. Eleven for his saving throw, and eleven for medicine, and five for the other wisdom-based skills. Charisma, nine for saving throw, nine for deception, and then three for the other three skills. He does. He, 
you know what? He's even though he's a charlatan, he is still a quote unquote good guy. So this is meaning that he is applying his skills in very direct ways um, to maybe counteract others who are trying to take advantage of someone or to punish an evil person, but maybe not directly, but by setting them up in machinations that span lifetimes or by investigating things or a whole slew of options. His passive perception, well, we have five and five from the feet is ten plus another 10, his passive perception is 20. As he's, he's paying attention to everything that's going on around him. Um, you know, smelling, hearing, tasting, um, seeing, maybe some extra sensory. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's how lucky manifests. It's actually like a sixth sense. Now that he has scores, by the way, he has earned a name. So if any of you have uh, name suggestions, you can offer them out. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, our initiative is going to be a plus two because that's uh, based on dex. It's a dex check, really. Think of, think of initiative as like a skill that uses dexterity. We're using scale mail, which, if I recall correctly, has a base 14 armor class and allows a little bit of dexterity on top of that. I think it allows two. Uh, scale mail... I don't know if uh, my head's kind of blocking it. Yeah, 14 plus dex modifier max 2, which we have. So that would put us at a 16. However, remember, we are uh, we are wielding a shield. So he actually has an armor class of 18. You want to call him friend? Friend what? Is that his nickname? Is that, uh, you know, is he... Is he like brother friend or is he um, friend so and so of the of the here and theirs? Why twenty? Twenty is the maximum cap that an ability can naturally become in fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. You can magically increase your stats above that, but a normal character can only max it can max out at twenty. Yep, uh, we do need to find... Uh, we haven't even talked about what his alter ego is, but yes, he will need two names. His his normal name, and then whatever his alter ego is going to be. Hit points. At first level, you get your maximum hit dice, or hit points of your hit die. He's a D8 hit die class, therefore at level 1, yes, maximum, 8. For levels beyond 1, and so therefore, right, we're a level 19 class or a level 19 character. So for the next 18 levels, we get half plus one of our hit die. Your DM might do things differently, but this is how I do it, and I suggest it that way because it's in your favor as a player character and takes a lot of randomness out of things. <laughs> if that's the case uh derek give him brawler uh so he can he can like trip people and uh he can make them submit on the ground and so he's and then he looks at them and says lynch pin you <laughs> Zardoz for the name. You want to call him Zardoz? Friend Zardoz? Now, for all your levels, so all 19 of them, you do get bonus hit points based on your constitution modifier. However, as you can see, that is zero. So that gets removed from the equation. Ninety plus eight is dun -dun -dun, ninety-eight. Is 
Sounds like a name a pet imp would have. <laughs> well, it's based off a running gag from the first Kane and Lynch trailer. Uh, in a whiny, complaining, mimicry tone. Lynch, snap out of it. Lynch, don't kill the hostages. I, I think I've heard of that game. I, I, I haven't played it, though. Then again, I don't play a lot of video games. Um, all right. Hey, Bubonic Man. I hope you feel better that food poisoning is, is absolutely the worst. But enjoy it. I hope you had a good holiday, and thank you for spending some time with us. Let's see. We get zero dark vision as a halfling. Our mace? Ooh. Well, we're proficient with it. It's a simple weapon, right? Uh, so that means we're swinging with a plus five. Because we do have a proficiency bonus of six. However, our strength is minus one. And therefore, when we look at the damage of our mace, this is going to be 1d6 minus one bludgeoning damage. Because we hit like little babby. Our light crossbow is going to be a little bit different, however. This is dexterity based. And so this is going to be a plus 8 to hit with our light crossbow, which is going to deal 1d8 plus 2 piercing damage. That's right, Santa. Little babby slaps. It's not, but the idea had so much potential if they only would have ran with it and not just chopped it to the lowest common denominator. It's multiplayer mode I still hold as one of the greatest experiences you could have. Oh. What makes its multiplayer so good, uh, Derek? Okay, now that we have this, we can also determine our ability to attack with spells. Much like we calculated with our weapons, it's the similar concept, right? What is your proficiency bonus? Because I would hope as a cleric we're proficient in spells. Plus the relevant stat modifier. In this case, if we need to roll to hit, we're, uh, we're going to roll our d20 and add 11. To figure out the difficulty class of resisting the effects of your spells, add 8 to your attack. It's just that easy. Bink. Which, by the way, for Charir over here, um, the DC for the Breath Weapon is based off of uh, Proficiency plus Con plus 8. So in this case, it's going to be DC 12. Okay. That was a 19. This is a plus 11. Uh, over here is just an alternative way. Like if, if you have key points as a monk, if you have lay on hands as a paladin, this character sheet offers a nice little extra bubble for these kind of magical pools. Sorcery points. Uh, in this case, we'll just call this uh, Channel Divinity. And we can do that three times a day now. Cleric prepared spells equals all right so as we talked about a cleric has access to every cleric spell in the player's handbook however you must commit to a certain number of them on any given day that commitment to pull x amount from the unlimited number of cleric spells is the number of spells you can prepare for a cleric that is equal, uh, the number of spells is your cleric level plus your wisdom bonus. In that case, we can prepare 24 extra spells. That is beyond what you get from your domain. Every day, you can split it up. Do you want to be an absolute madman and load up on five, 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 you know, and just load up your high tier spells? You can do that. You know, if you're like, nah. Level 1 spells, I'm only going to use Cure and ramp it up anyway, and I'm going to save uh, my, uh, my flexibility for higher slots. You can do that between every time you sleep and pray for your spells. Now, what this does not affect are your cantrips. 
your cantrips are fixed to your character. The exchange for that is you get to cast cantrips an unlimited amount of times. So you're never out of magic missile. You're never out of, you know, some utility or another. You always have those handy, but they're they're uh, they're fixed to you. Whereas your other spells are ones that you can manipulate and you can swap and you can ramp up into higher spell slots and that kind of a thing. So really, uh, I mean, however you do this, that's going to be up to you as the pilot of this character. Um, you know, you could always... Um, I don't know, you could just go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then we go. Seventeen, mm, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Oh. 22, 23, 24. This is, this is purely an example. I'm not even going to fill in the spells because they can be any cleric spell. But there's 20... Uh, so the, here's an example of spreading out your spells kind of evenly between your tiers. And I'll show you real quick what I mean by this. Let's go to chapter 11. So here, here's your cleric spells. You know, cantrips, that's fine. At level 1, you effectively know all of these spells. Because you can select, well, up to your preparation, the number of spells from this list. At 2nd level, 3rd level, and so forth. 4th, 5th, 6th. You get a ton of stuff as a cleric. Not to mention what your domain gives you as well. That is usually spells not found on the cleric list because they specialize you in a particular direction. And we don't have an animal companion, so I mean, we don't have to do much with that. And remember, too, by the way, there's, there's three tiers to spells there's the spells that you know. There's the spells that you've prepared, and then there's your spell slots. Let's say that uh, let's say that I have uh, cure wounds here. Okay, I can cast cure wounds twenty four times if I really wanted to. Does that make sense? Many spells will allow you to cast up into higher slots for greater effect. Not all, but some. But here, despite me taking 23 other spells that I may possibly use at some point in time over the day, I have, I, I've gone from my total spells known, and I've, did, I've then uh, gone to my mid-tier in the bottleneck, down to the number of spells I've prepared, of which Cure Wounds is one, but the last bottleneck where everything is going out, well, apparently you guys gotta get, you gotta get, uh, you have to stop getting hit by the boss, because I've used all 24 of my casts, of any of the spells that I have uh, prepared today, I've cured you 24 times with my spells. So hopefully that that makes sense to you all out there and how magic, um, and how magic tends to work. All the classes that have magic are gonna do it a little bit differently. But that's the gist. There we go. That's character number two. He has a personality. We've given him some good direction. Uh, I think we've conceptualized him. Hi, Fox. Welcome. I hope that you've been enjoying your uh, your informative ride along uh, with everything that we've been doing here tonight. And again, ask yourself, how would you play this character? Put yourself in those characters' shoes. 
or boots or whatever you'd say. And Zardoz said to his friends, please don't swim in needles anymore. <laughs> Ah, the notification! Run, Fox, run! Excellent. Well, we have two of our five characters now made over the course of the week, and you'll see the schedule down below. Over the course of the week, we're going to make our three other characters. We're going to make a map. And then on Saturday, we are going to do a party analysis, and I'll show you how to do that and how to make sure it's meaningful and effective. And we are going to, we're going to make the outline of a campaign to send these characters through. Um, now, I won't be running the campaign on the stream. I mean, you all can take these ideas and run with them if you'd like to, uh, because all these resources will be made available to you on our Discord. Um, but we'll go through the, the essence of the campaign, you know, uh, the milestones to reach. We'll tell a story that will involve these five characters in some way. Um, that's fun or thematic, um, you know, tragedy, horror, comedy, etc. We've done We've done so many different types of campaigns here. Someone tried to access your Steam account. Uh oh. Whoa. Uh, did you have it on a tablet or a, a tablet or a, a pad or something? Or you think someone was just trying to randomly guess? All the same. Oh, I'm glad there's that stopgap. Make sure that you uh, you're cycling your passwords and whatnot. Uh, yep. You know, uh, the, we have done a very good horror campaign. And really, uh, by by we, I mean, I was along for the ride. Derek was a guest DM for that week. And uh, and Derek has, uh, he made a, uh, he went through the instructions on how to make a horror-themed campaign using uh, a region that we've developed in our stream community for a and d setting. In fact, uh, the same setting that I will be running Dungeons & Dragons on Tuesdays. Uh, since we were able to develop that pretty well. Uh-oh. Well, hopefully, uh, Dark Wolf, you, you didn't, uh, you or no one in your family called uh, a a, uh, a virus fixer or anything, uh, did you? Can I give a brief overview of the characters? Oh, well, welcome back, Pi. Um, the two characters we've made this week, because every week we make a new campaign. Uh, we make five characters, a map, a dungeon or something, and then we'll, we'll run them through a conceptual campaign. Um, the first here is a female gold dragonborn who grew up and probably still is a charlatan and someone who runs uh, con games, like sleight of hand, you know, card tricks, three card Monty, um, you know, distraction techniques, that kind of a thing. Um, her class is a thief, you know, that kind of supports it, but, you know, this is definitely who she is. Um, her, she prefers to do this uh, by using a lot of religious charms. As a, as a distraction or as a secondary con to try and, you know, win people's trust. Uh, well, Dark Wolf, I, I hope you can contact Steam or otherwise uh, prevent that person from fully accessing your account. I presume you, you denied it when you got that email or whatever, right? Uh, not like the Joker per se. I mean, she is selfish, right? She's neutral evil. Um, but she's not, she's not murderous. Uh, I haven't brought it up, Dark Wolf, because we were making the character. I'll check it over the break, uh, and then when I come back from uh, from getting some water and whatnot, 
I can bring it up and show it on stream. She has a joke for every occasion, especially occasions where humor is inappropriate. I keep multiple holy symbols on me and invoke whatever deity might come in useful in any given moment. Um, friendship. Material goods come and go, but friendship lasts forever. I owe everything to my mentor, a horrible person who's probably rotting in jail somewhere. And so we're, we kind of conceptualized that maybe she was like an orphan under the, the character Fagin, you know, who would like kind of guilt or train orphans to, to uh, steal. Or she was a victim of some kind of abuse of his and set him up to go to jail because of his crimes. And now she's just living freely because she's not under, under his uh, oppressive rule anymore. Uh, and I hate to uh, I hate to admit it, and I will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. Um, she's she's a big girl, six foot nine, two hundred and fifty, uh, and she's sitting at a nice fifty one. Um, so she has a lot of experience doing uh, doing this stuff. And interestingly enough, now for the second completely random character that we've generated we made a knowledge domain cleric who's also a charlatan. And this is one who loves working his way into people's good graces in order to scam them. <clears throat> and uh, especially what's nice, he also has a joke for every occasion. He falls in and out of love easily and is always pursuing someone. That means maybe he's pursuing Charir over here. He also believes in friendship as an ideal, and he also runs away. These two have a ton in common with each other. Although one's a very large dragonborn lady and the other's a small boy. <laughs> Pardon me, hiccup. Somewhere out there I have a child who doesn't know me. I'm making the world better for him or her as, as, as the bond. And, and so by going through here, you know, we have two people, false identities. They both have so much in common and yet are approaching maybe similar goals from two different angles. We have a uh, neutral good character here and a neutral evil character. So one is approaching things more selflessly. The other is approaching things more selfishly. And, uh, you know, I smell buddy comedy. <laughs> so hopefully that, uh, hopefully that uh, kind of catches you up on the two characters for this that we've generated so far this week. And you know what? There's going to be three more. Uh, and we're going to go through the same process to randomly create them. And then we're going <laughs> to we'll see what the party looks like. Steel Dust, I, I roleplayed a Harley Quinn character in SWOTOR for years. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad you had fun doing it, Steel Dust. How would the Child of Zardoz feature in the game? Um, that child could be... Well, let's see. He is... Uh, he's 74. I mean, that child could be, what? 60? Fifty. So the child could be an NPC. The child could always just be something in the background. The child could be the villain. You know, jilted by his father who's decided to, instead of supporting him, to just continue traipsing around the land, spreading his uh, spreading his lies. So he's a bad guy, but maybe he's even a good guy because he, he, he wants his dad to stop, you know, selling people uh, false promises or something along those lines. Um, the child can fill any role that we really want. It could be a newborn if we really want it to be. Um, what As a DM, what is best for you? All we've determined is that there's a child that belongs to this character. The next character is when? Tomorrow. Um, we're going to make character number three tomorrow, Meg. The baby could be a person in a little bag. Well, I don't think he'd be carrying around the baby with him because he's kind of estranged from that character. All right. Ponder, think. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a five to ten minute break. I'm gonna get some water, refresh myself, and then when we come back, hey, open talk. Yes, the second character was out of the player's handbook, Rikon. 
All right, I'll be back. Talk amongst yourselves. Play the fun chat games that I have uh, going on in here. Um, you can win some extra experience points. There's some fun roleplay prompts if you want to draw from the deck of many things with exclamation point deck or exclamation point who goes there. Um, you can duel each other. You can battle random wandering monsters. You can go on an adventure. There's so much stuff down there that you can involve yourself in. So have fun. I'll be back in a bit. And then, hey, it's Lucy Goosey from here. We can talk about we can talk about uh, D and D. We can talk about other systems. We can talk about character creation or comparing this or that. Um. Oh, nice. Oh, the baby died as an infant, and he carries a skeleton around in a little bag. That would be very interesting and compelling, right? If he wants to try and make the world a better place, he's carrying his, uh, you know, maybe his uh, stillborn son or daughter with him as a reminder of, you know, for whom he's doing this. Oh, it's it's Derek's fault. Gotcha. Steel Dust says that creeps me out a bit. Well, uh, interesting personalities to characters, right? All right, I'll be back in a little bit, everyone. <laughs> 